Hello, uh, to round things off I'd now like to just give you an example of how you might go about sketching a phase portrait by hand and if you do this by hand uh, basically you want to identify and classify uh, your equilibria. So we want to find the equilibrium points of our system and determine whether they're nodes or saddles and so on, um, and then sort of draw the appropriate um, little sketch of the, the phase portrait around those points, depending on whether on the type of equilibrium point it is. And then maybe, uh, if you want, um, add on a few arrows um, for some um, x dots. So just take some points in your state space, find out what x dot is and draw a little arrow corresponding to that direction. When we introduced these face portraits, you said they're a collection of arrows, maybe with some trajectories. And so when you're sketching by hand, you're just going to really identify the behavior around these critical points, or around these equilibrium points, and maybe add on a few of the extra arrows. And uh, I'll just give you an example of this process, and we're going to do, um, we're going to analyze the system which is called phase lock loop. And we have two uh, states, so x1 dot is equal to x2, and x2 dot is equal to minus x2. And I'm going to put in a very special case. I'm going to say uh, we have a quarter. And then here we have a sine nonlinearity, we have some alpha, and then we have minus x1. So alpha here is a parameter, and then our states are x1 and x2. So this is already in our standard form of x dot is equal to function of x. Um, and so in order to sketch the phase portrait, uh, the first thing we need to do is identify the equilibrium points, and then we classify them um, by looking at their eigenvalues. We'll sketch all of that on, and then if we wanted, we could um, add on a few extra points. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is find the equilibrium points. So step one is find equilibriums. Um, and an equilibrium point is a point such that x dot is equal to zero. So we see that this implies, so for x1 dot to be equal to zero, x2 has to be equal to zero. So x2 is equal to zero. And now we look at our second equation and see what we can learn from there. Well, if x2 dot is equal to zero and x2 is equal to zero, then we need a quarter sine alpha minus x1 to equal zero, and in particular, this implies that x1 equals alpha plus n pi, where n is some integer, and so like minus one, zero, one, and so on. So for all of these values of n, we get um, a different equilibrium point. So we have actually an infinite number of equilibrium points, We'll just sketch on a few on our uh, um, phase portrait. So we draw on our phase portrait axes, x1 and x2. And then let's just mark on some of these equilibrium points. So our first one, the easiest one, is to just set n is equal to 0. So here this is alpha. And so this is an equilibrium point. Our equilibrium, equilibrium points correspond to x2 is equal to 0 and x1 is equal to alpha, alpha plus n pi, alpha plus pi, alpha plus 2 pi, and so on. And so we would actually also have an equilibrium point here, so alpha plus pi, and then here we've got alpha plus 2 pi, and so on. And we have the same going in the other direction. So we've got all of these equilibrium points. And now to flesh out our phase portrait, we just need to classify uh, this equilibrium point, and to do that, we need to linearize our system. And so let's do that over here, maybe. And so we know our linearization looks like d by dt of delta x, where delta x is our deviation from our equilibrium point. 
and this, let's use the Jacobian method because it'll be a bit easier when we're finding lots and lots of different um, linearizations. And so here we need df1, uh, dx1, df1, dx2, df2, dx1, df2, dx2. Okay, great. And that's evaluated that x is equal to one of our equilibrium points, or any one of them. Um, and the nice thing about using the Jacobian method is we, we just find this Jacobian matrix and then to get the linearizations around all of our different equilibrium points, we just have to substitute different values into um, that Jacobian. Uh, so let's do it. Um, and so, yeah, the, we get this linearization plus delta x and then plus higher order terms. Um, but now let's focus on finding this object here. So we need to find df1, dx1. Um, so this is our f1 relationship. So x1 dot is equal to f1 of x. Nothing here depends on x1. So df1 by dx1 is equal to 0. df1 by dx2, well, f1 of x is just equal to x2. So this is equal to 1. Now, it's a little bit harder. Uh, let's do this term here, because this is also easy. So df2 by dx2. Well, x2 only appears linearly in our relationship here. And so we have a minus 1 there. So if we differentiate that with respect to x2, we get minus 1. And then finally, what do we get here? Uh, well, if we differentiate this thing with respect to x1, we get minus a quarter cos alpha minus x1. And now we substitute in our equilibrium points, and our equilibrium points are given by... So every one of our equilibrium points is of the form... Um, so we want to set x equal to x star, and x star, well, our x2 is equal to 0 at all our equilibrium points, and otherwise we have alpha plus pi. Um, so what do we get? Well, we get our A matrix for all of our equilibrium points. They look like 0, 1, and then here I have minus a quarter, and this is cos of n pi, and if you simplify that a little bit, you get minus 1 uh, to the n. So the cos of pi is equal to minus 1, cos of 2 pi is equal to plus 1, and we alternate minus 1 plus 1, minus 1 plus 1, and we can compactly write this like this, um, and then here yeah, we have minus 1. So we've found our linearization, and we, in fact, in one fell swoop, we were able to find the linearization around this one, this one, this one, um, and all of our equilibrium points in one go. And so now we just need to understand uh, what's going on here. So to do that, we need to find the eigenvalues, which means that we need to find the solutions. Um, determinant lambda i minus a. Let's put an n here to indicate that this is the linearization around the nth equilibrium point. Um, we want to find solutions to this equation. Well, if we multiply out this determinant, what do we get? We get um, uh, lambda squared plus lambda plus k times minus 1 to the n are equal to solutions when this thing equals 0. And if you go away and you apply the quadratic formula, what you will find is that um, for n equal to uh, 0, you get a pair of eigenvalues in the same location, whereas if n um, is 1, you get one positive eigenvalue and one negative eigenvalue. And then the pattern just flip-flops around um, for n. So we get that n even and n odd implies lambda 1 bigger than 0, lambda 2 less than 0, and n even 
implies that lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2. And we can probably even guess that the eigenvalue we need is a half. I'm sorry, this k should be a quarter. Um, fine. Uh, so what does that mean? It means that for odd values, our equilibrium point is a saddle. And for even values, it's stable. And we're in this annoying case where we would have to go in and find out whether um, we had two eigenvectors or not. If you go through um, this, you can find out that it's in the case where there's only one eigenvector. And in fact, we can see um, that our eigenvector is equal to 2 minus 1. And let's just verify that up here. So if we look 0, 1, if n is even, so we've just got minus a quarter and minus 1. And let's just guess uh, for our eigenvector 2 minus 1. I mean, you, you obviously know how to do this properly, so we're not going to go through the steps here. And if we just multiply this out, we get minus 1, and then minus a quarter 2 is minus a half, plus 1. This doesn't look right. Oh no, it is. Uh, minus 1, a half, and this is... Um, in, it points in the same direction as this vector here. So we see that the eigenvalue is minus a half, and this is a corresponding eigenvector. And so what does that mean? Well, um, if we take our even equilibrium point, then we take the direction, which is two steps this way, but minus one steps down. And so our eigenvector looks something like that. It's stable. And then we're in this case where our trajectories will sort of uh, like so. This so this is um, this is our kind of special repeated eigenvalue case. It sort of looks like a node, uh, but there's only one eigenvector rather than two eigenvectors. And this holds for all even n. So this is our next even n solution, and we get something that looks a bit. That and the same over here. And so, what happens uh, everywhere else? Well, we find here that we're in the saddle node case. And again, we could go away and find the eigenvectors to try and understand what the behavior looks like a little bit better. We would draw on our two eigenvectors, say something like that, and it's repeated here too. And then one of them will be. Um, stable and one will be unstable so let's just say look something like that and then we would fill on the corresponding uh no that's sorry that one's unstable so and we get something that looks like this um and this is what you would do if you were to build a phase portrait by hand. And you might, you could start to maybe guess what some of the intermediate trajectories looked like, or go and just sketch a few arrows corresponding to x dot at different points as well. Um, but if you're asked to draw a phase portrait by hand, this is what you should do. You should find the singular points, classify them, and then, uh, yeah, classify them into nodes or foci or saddles, and then just sketch on the basic behaviors of those. Um, Thank you.